This week on Patrick's show, my union jackass was this guy, Ronnie Archer Morgan, who refused to value a slave trader's bangle on the Antiques Roadshow, so I wrote a piece about it in the Mail Online. This ivory bangle here is not about trading in ivory. It's about trading in human life. Yes. And it's probably one of the most difficult things that I've ever had to talk about. I just don't want to value it. I do not want to put a price on something that signifies such an awful business. I just love you for bringing it to the roadshow and thank you so much for making me so sad. <laughs> Thank you for making me so sad. What kind of passive-aggressive nonsense is that? It's called the Antiques Roadshow, mate. You're supposed to value things. Now we sat through your lecture. How much is it worth? Honestly, at least he admitted it belonged to an indigenous slave owner, so basically the trainer was black. Tragic news. We hear of three Brits killed due to an Israeli drone strike. They were travelling in a, an aid convoy which had just delivered aid in Gaza when they were targeted and struck. Israel have apologised, but it was a precision strike apparently caused by a communication error. Seven were killed in total, and now there's talk of banning arms sales to Israel as a result, a move which former Prime Minister Boris Johnson described would amount to government madness, as this week 400 lawyers sent a letter in, to into Rishi that he had no le saying that he had no legal obligation to take action against Israel, countering the 600 letters with an opposing view the previous week. War is such a grubby business. Humza Useless was up to his old tricks again, pushing through more nonsense legislation, this time in the form of the Scottish hate speech law, which even had lefties like Jonathan Pye rallying against it. Just the briefest of looks at the details of this new bill, you begin to see that it is, at best, massively ill-conceived, frighteningly vague and therefore scarily open to abuse, utterly unworkable and almost certainly unpoliceable, and at worst, an unthinkably draconian and insidious piece of legislation that attacks the civil liberties of anyone stepping foot across Hadrian's Wall who expresses an opinion that doesn't fit in the very narrow Overton's window of what so-called liberals would call acceptable. So basically you can be criminalised for somebody overhearing something that you said to somebody else who can complain without your knowledge. They can hold a file about you that you don't know about that can affect your chances when you go for a job. Like a non-crime hate incident that could destroy your chances or you could wind up behind bars. It's that bad that Umza himself is the most reported person as a result. You can also be criminalised for saying that a trans woman is not a biological woman. The brilliant J.K. Rowling wasn't having any of it. She stood her ground and invited them to arrest the laws. An ass, in my view. Also this week, it was reported civil servants are being offered trigger support if they're triggered and reminded of past trauma, which causes them to feel an overwhelming sadness. Like, for example, hearing about slavery. Really? How have they managed to make themselves the victim? Home office staff are also being given mandatory inclusion and belonging training. Ridiculous. We're paying for this, by the way. Civil servants are also apparently preparing to strike if they don't agree with the government's support for Israel. And today we hear that may, they may go on strike because they've been told to return to the office for a few days a week. Staff from the ONS, who have worked from home since the start of lockdown, are now refusing to come back to the office for just two days Seriously, who's running this show, them or us? And it would be remiss of me not to mention William Ragg, who made the errors of all errors by photographing what I can only imagine were his privates whilst leaving his head in shot. That's my guess anyway. But basically, he was being blackmailed as someone somewhere has compromising photos of him. So he gave away some other MPs' numbers. Where do we get these people from? Seriously, is this the best calibre of politicians we can find? It's been a mucky old week.